Shalom and welcome with Bindernovsky. In this video I want to share some kind of a vision that's some kind of a, a little bit of stark black and white contrast. So just a few explanations. So I join a group of people who worship together over one of the online things, you know, not, not physical. We're in uh, seven, eight different countries. There's some people of them who play and sing while others just listening. Uh, basically, so one at a time is playing for ha half an hour, an hour or a bit more. And then the next one is joining and then the next and then the next. And this is usually at the beginning of Shabbat called Erev Shabbat and after sunset Friday. Uh, also at the end of Shabbat, so just before sunset, we start there and uh, called Motzei Shabbat. We meet, they meet during the week also basically every day. Uh, not all join during the week, every time. Mm, also not me because my uh, schedule during the week is already packed full and with all kinds of work, especially at the moment with the preparation for my exodus. So when three, four or five groups or individuals are playing, the whole worship uh, goes on for a couple of hours. None of us is pro a professional musician, so very, uh, most of it is very simple worship, usually in Hebrew or sometimes in tongues, and occasionally it happens that Yeshua gives me or someone else something prophetic, which uh, in my case will be, is now, it's not English. So it happened uh, just lately that the last day, the 31st of the third month in the Gregorian year 2023, so I think it was around 8.30 when uh, I started. I don't look so much on my clock all the time, you so know. Like other, other people do that just to the minute Excel or second exactly. Just doesn't matter so much. So if you want to listen to the whole thing, I go to my website where I have a part of the set, my part of that session recorded. It's a relative lousy quality, um, not a studio recording. There's, but there's not much editing on that. I added a little bit reverb to have or else it would be a little bit dry and also stretched a little bit the thing to the sides so it appears that there is some form of stereo though it was recorded only with only mono with one microphone somewhere somewhere in the middle of the room so luckily i have a software that makes me able to boost the vocals because the piano was simply too loud and the vocals hard to be heard Still not perfect, but much better than it used, than as the original. So besides that, I did not do any editing, just live from beginning. I think the beginning is a little bit cut, because I didn't press the start button right at the beginning. But from the beginning till end, uh, with all the errors and flaws and my playing limitations, and you hear the keys of the electric piano where I use a little bit the older one here from the, the bit that's in the building. Some of the keys are rattling quite nos noticeably. Uh, it, in this video, I, you will hear it slightly in the background. Uh, it, but if you want to listen to the unobstructed audio, go to my website, the link is provided. So about 95% of the piano playing is simply improvisation. In between, there are some fractions of, a few fractions of different songs. It's mostly it's just, just improvisation and then the singing somehow with tongues, and, uh, just except the, uh, the vision. I didn't. I don't sing all the time. I just let the piano worship alone. But enough the introduction and explanation. Now the vision. So uh, I also first a little bit explanation. So it started out as normal worship. First, 
an hour with another brother. I think he laid also the, 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 the foundation that I got the vision in his, uh, when he was performing his worship and then uh, my part. So the first 10 minutes or 15 minutes, uh, it's more like warming up the fingers before I started with singing. Sometimes I start singing right away, but this time I just played for a while. And the vision starts then uh, maybe half an hour into my worship. And there first I saw the world, the earth. First in a normal way, and then more and more I saw the world deteriorating. Uh, what a world into chaos and then uh, we're already in chaos but it went deeper and deeper into something like uh i would i found actually a nice picture on that uh, a disgusting rotten fruit and i i put here that picture that i took once of an apple so it was some years ago now a few days after i bought it i mean it was not weeks or months later it was just Maybe two days later, after I bought it, I thought, take it to the beach and to eat it. Where usually they have there something, a little bit, uh, go swimming and then have a snack. So outside it appeared really nice and good. But when I bite, when I took my first bite, I thought, no, there is something wrong here. So, and then I realized it was completely rotten from inside. So I cut it in half, I chopped it in two pieces, and then uh, I saw how bad it truly was. I think it is a good example how to describe seeing the world as we live in here, deteriorating. Just imagine, the world is like this apple, though the earth is not a ball with something that science named as a core which is here in the apple, that, that brown, disgusting things. But according to scripture, earth is, some, earth is somehow flat with a deep abyss below. But never mind, regardless of your belief, that's not important for this vision. Though it appears physical in uh, various ways, this uh, deteriorating, but the root is rather a spiritual matter. So, and in this vision, it's like when you, when you take the rotten core that grew and grew and basically, you know, just started small and then it took over the whole world. In the, in the, in the apple, the whole apple, you know, it's just a little bit outside that is, looks nice, but uh, inside it was just disgusting and ugly as it is, yes, and like the brown of, the, of the, this apple. Uh, just I thought, would you like to eat such an apple? Uh, same question, how much you like to live in this uh, compared similar environment here in this, on this earth? I think most people except a few perverted individuals would not love to eat such an apple and toss it right away. So. I'm wondering why Yeshua keeps holding on to this world so long, you know, and that man, one day he will toss it. He will toss the earth because it's completely rotten then one day. That there's nothing left that is an apple anymore, an earth anymore. The, the thing that he created, the beautiful creation from the beginning. So while playing piano, actually, I could not find words when I saw the earth and I just needed to adjust myself. What is going on here? And so I, I just did some whatever unusual chord progressions, if, if, if any chord progressions at all. It's just playing something, something without a harmony or melody. And, but after a while, the scene switched. You know, it took a little while to the, the scene switched and I need to also needed to adjust my eyes. What's going on here? And then I realized it's it's the heavenly wedding. So very, the rotten thing and then this beautiful wedding. So complete different scenes. And what I could sense in the vision, it's so close. 
so much closer than many people may believe or even want to uh, see that coming. Because many are possibly not uh, ready to join. Well, beside the timing, where I don't know any time frame, there was something, uh, a couple of things that surprised me. And all of us surely have been here and there to uh, some weddings in the natural, I think. Uh, some weddings are small with a few people, just more personal thing. Other weddings are quite big. Guess the biggest wedding I joined of was some friends in Israel was about 500 people or so. However, the heavenly wedding is above everything. Because no one ever has seen such a thing here on earth. And it's not necessarily also about numbers. That's not a point. Even, you know, with most beautiful decorated weddings, there is this, this, you cannot compare it. Sadly, there will be not that many people in a heavenly wedding as there could be. Possibly not billions joining, but it's hard to say. And the wedding is not Revelation 7 verse 9, where a vast multitude of from all nations, tongues and tribes will worship before the throne. That's two different things. Um, so compared to that thing in Revelation 7, is, is the wedding is obviously relatively small. Uh, but still many mi million people I, I would see, you know, that might join the wedding. But strangely enough, in this wedding, it is like everyone is close to Yeshua. Even those, it seemed to be in those in far distance or from a human perspective and of you know, physical understanding, someone sits beside me. It, it's hard to describe. Even those far in, in, in distance, it's like they're sitting just beside. Issue or at the Last Supper, like Yohanan was leaning his head on the chest of Yeshua. It's like the same everyone. It, it's such an intimate, close relationship or uh, meeting that it's it's we cannot describe it in it and and understand how it works out in the from the natural perspective. And what you expect for a wedding, uh, surely singing and dancing, and so on. Uh, Ye Yeshua was dressed in white as all of us, uh, but he was shining. He was sh really shining, brighter than the sun. Yet all those who joined the wedding, they could l look at him without being blinded. In the natural, you would, I mean, brighter than the sun, even the sun itself, it's you, you cannot look into it, but he was brighter and you would be immediately blind very quickly. But in this wedding, everyone could look at him. So then Yeshua started to sing for his bride and the angels joined the choir. And the singing was not like what we know as music. It was so much more. Uh, what I could see, it's like a cloud and, and not a cloud like what we know, a cloud of smoke from whatever, a fire or burning plastic, but a, a, a cloud with colors never seen before. Colors so beautiful that colors that doesn't exist on earth. And, as I said, Yeshua was also dancing. It's not like dancing like this. Mick Jackson or uh, some hippie hoppy, whatever, half almost naked dance, girly dancers or so. No, it was pure and holy and just beautiful. Nothing we can describe in human words. Uh, I don't know. 
how dancing will play out for me when I join the wedding in heaven once uh, because I can't just can't dance. Some people are gifted to dance and it looks beautiful and but my movements are it's just like a machine or it's just like a clown whatever that, that does not match any dancing style at all but I don't care. And we were actually singing the Song of Songs, so the original one, not a translated, a real, the real thing, the from the deepest depths of Yeshua's love for us. Well, partially I had a hard time to play because the tea of my tears. Uh, I don't, I didn't want to water the piano. Uh, however, it went then. After a while, while, a little while, I went into uh, the day of judgment when Yeshua will finally separate the sheep and the goats. And that will be definitely a very, very creepy moment for many. Too many. I also want to say that I don't know when all of this will be and how exactly it will happen how all the pieces is puzzle uh, fit together and how it will look like in the natural. So when the world is going down the drain, uh, we could already see somehow, but I can see how rotten the world already has become. I mean, the vision was way worse, but yeah, some countries are more, others less, but all in all we see, I see even in my lifetime, this small fraction it's just this spot, this little speck in time. Even in human history, it's nothing. And we can, I can see how the filth of the world has grown exponentially everywhere with like a wild, aggressive cancer. I mean, what can we expect when people live in sin? It has to go this way. However, the vision of the wedding was not something that I would have expected. And that Yeshua will dance and sing for us, his bride. It was, it was actually more a shocking surprise when suddenly he went up and started to dance. And actually, I remember if, <laughs> it reminded me of a friend of mine, he, what he did somewhere 30, 35 years ago or so. So he wrote a wedding song for his wife and she did not know. And he asked me to join playing the trumpet and then some uh, playback music. I played a trumpet and he was singing. Uh, and so while on that wedding day, while they were sitting there with his wife, he was sitting there with his wife before the altar, the pastor somewhere there, uh, suddenly, it just stood up, but he didn't only stood up, but he stood up in a way that his wife thought he's going to leave the wedding. It just get out. And she was completely in shock, <laughs> even many of the guests. So, because no one knew what is going to happen now, uh, except me. And then we started to sing that song that he wrote and his wife, she messed up her makeup with her tears, uh, tripping down on her garment or her wedding dress. Uh, afterwards, she said she should have known some, because the month before the wedding, he spent so much time in his little music corner and always he meant so, he met so often with me that this goofball here on the couch and when they come together she already knew when they come together they always fiddle out some some can come out with some uh, funny surprises so but it was a moment when she didn't expect it and when we stand before Yeshua possibly we expect a lot of things but he will possibly come out with something we did not expect. Even we afterwards said, we should have known that because of his uh, amazing grace and his love towards us. 
but yeah, it was like this vision, you know, this. <laughs> and actually, my friend uh, is in Germany. He's an excellent singer, a really excellent. I did some recordings for him, very beautiful. And I pray for years that he find Yeshua before it's too late. And yes, they are still married. But in the vision, it was, yeah, it was almost similar, possibly uh, even a bigger surprise. I mean, not that the people were thinking, oh, he's leaving the wedding. Maybe he's leaving to take the rest of the population. I don't know what's going to happen. Uh, only the bride will not have faces, their faces covered with uh, artificial chemical poisonous uh, makeup, but with pure holiness really pure holiness that I desire to have. It's not so easy. Yes, and this scene flips him back and forth, also in the judgment and separating the sheep and goats and, and back to the wedding and so on and forth. Uh, you can listen if you like, so it will have a little bit of picture, but generally not too many words that I uh, say there. That's why I made this video to have a, a little bit of, give you a little bit of broader perspective of what I saw. Uh, so you need to, to, if you listen, you need to Holy Spirit to open your spiritual eyes and ears and to see the same in all the details, or maybe you see more details. I don't know how it will turn out in this life or in let's say in this physical realm that we are living in and when the, all the things will happen when the wedding will be and when this will happen and that will happen and uh, you know chronologically like from that vision it might be the same like the book of revelation it's just mingled together or just mixed up because when you see some when Johanan in the revelation possibly he saw uh, several things at the same time and then you can only write one thing at a time so he cannot he cannot write everything on one page it would be just a, a mess so but I'm looking forward to the wedding really really I hope I will be found ready and worthy to join uh, I mean, even without this vision, I know it will be beyond description. And I hope to see you all there. It might be very soon. So many people sense that we are so close to it. And I'm... Ah, I'm just looking forward to... Forget the world. You know, all the rotten fruit, all the... My own fruit. A lot of it is, some of it is okay, but that's a lot of fruit that's not good. But by Yeshua's grace and mercy and his forgive, he, he will forgive, he can forgive. So but now enough is to say, and you can listen it. It's on my website, the link is provided. And yeah, be blessed and Adonai be with you. Shalom, shalom.